Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Glow T4 in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Glow T4 is from Argentina, it appears, and he opens with E4. Um, I'm going to play E5 in this game, continuing our experimentation against uh, various openings in the 15 minute pool. So, I do play E5 in a lot of my tournament games. I think I'll play Knight F6 in this position and see if he wants to enter the Berlin endgame. I think that would be interesting to play in a 15 minute game. And he does indicate that he wants to go into it, so I'll take on e4. Now d4 would be the way to go into the endgame properly, and he does play that. So knight back to d6. And now the main line runs bishop takes c6, d takes c6, and then d takes e5. I'll play knight f5. Check. And we're in the Berlin endgame, the legendary Berlin endgame. And uh, the Berlin has a reputation of being very drawish um, and boring. But um, I actually think the Berlin endgame is a very rich um, sort of queenless middle game. It's hard to even call it an endgame, I think. It's a queenless middle game, really. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. I don't have hardly any experience with it. I don't think I've ever got this endgame OTB, although I have played Knight F6 on move 3 on occasion. But, um, yeah, it's fun. Um, I'm choosing a pretty weird way of playing this with b6. Uh, I'm just going to go bishop d7 now. And he'll probably put the bishop on b2. After which I'm thinking I'll play bishop e7. Just seeing if there's a reason to play anything else. Knight e7 might also make sense here too. Because a lot of times you play knight e7 and then put the knight on g6 in this line. So I do think that is worthy of attention as well. Um, no, let's go bishop e Well, okay. Now I'm second-guessing myself. <laughs> let's go bishop e7. We'll keep it simple. Bet king c8 could also be played. I just know that this b6 uh, line is a trendy way of playing against the... Um, or playing the Berlin Wall for black. So I wanted to give it a shot. I think bishop d7 and b6 can be played kind of interchangeably on move 9 there. So bishop e7, he could play g4 right now if he wanted. And then I'd have to play knight h4. Because I don't really want to play knight h6. So he's going to play h3 and maybe prepare g4. So question here is, do I want to play h5? I certainly could. h5, g4... Um, Take, take, and then maybe I can get his pawn overextended, would be the idea. Let's play h5. It's not entirely clear to me, like, when h5 is a good move in these positions. Like, that's a very subtle question. So, you know, here I think it's okay. He does play knight e4. That makes sense. Opens up his bishop. Now he's focusing in on this newly weakened g5 square as well. Um... E6 might be a possibility in the future. I could play C5 and try to counterbalance this play by sticking my bishop on C6, but I'm kind of worried about knight G5. I wonder what knight G5 entails for me. Hmm. Just see. Rook h6 doesn't make a lot of sense, I don't think. It would be interesting, though. Maybe rook h6 is actually not that bad of a move here. Rook h6, and if he goes, you know, brings a knight to g5, I can just play king e8 or bishop e8. Yeah, let's do that. I do know this is an idea. When you have played h5, you can swing the rook up through h6. It's not played like to attack, really. It's played more so just to activate that rook, which sometimes has a hard time because you know the king blocking the two rooks from coordinating is an issue for black in the Berlin. I bet he'll put a rook on d1, if I were to guess, like rook a d1, or he'll play knight g5, probably knight e g5. If he, if he has to choose between the two. 
If he plays knight eg5, I'll have to decide whether to play king e8 or bishop e8. King e8 looks safer. Bishop e8 looks more enterprising. I think I'd, I'd probably lean towards king e8. Because bishop e8, eh, I don't know. I'd have to play like king c8, king b7 then if I want to get coordinated. So I think king e8 looks better. And my tentative plan here is to play c5 and then stick my bishop on f3. I like the look of that. I also might play rook g6. That could be a move I play on the next move. Then I would be attacking his knight uh, more than once. And if he were to play h4, I could play knight takes h4. Now that he's played this move, though, that's actually like a, a move directed against rook g6, I think. Because he could play h4, and knight takes h4 wouldn't work. He would just take... Although then maybe I could play f6, perhaps. That looks kind of weird, but it might work. I think c5 makes good sense here, so I'll probably do that. Yeah, I like c5. Let's play that. And I'm going to put the bishop on c6. This bishop needs um, some new horizons, and this diagonal seems to fit the bill. So bishop to c6 coming. This is exactly the type of game I was hoping for. Really interesting game um, out of this opening. So um, I'm also noticing I could try to play f6 at some point. Don't think I want to do it right now, though. Maybe it would be okay. F6, and he takes and then plays the knight back to e4. My structure is compromised, but uh, that does have some appeal. No, I think I'll stick with bishop c6. I'll just play it simple. And I may play f6 soon. The only problem is now, like if I were to play f6, the e6 square is not defended by my bishop, so that might be giving him some more options. Okay, so rook e1. Now, if I were to play rook d8, he can play e6. And if I play f6, he has knight f7, forking my rooks. So that's a little annoying. Um, I can play f6 again, but he'll take and then play knight e4, I'm thinking. This is what he'll do. Maybe that's not so bad for me, though. I have good squares for my pieces in that case. Really nice squares, actually. Maybe I should do that. The only thing is... Yeah, e6, is knight e6 at all possible? I mean, it hangs his knight here, so probably not. No, he can take c7, but no, he doesn't want to do that. Yeah, I'm leaning towards f6 in this position. So I'm going to play f6, he's going to take, I take, and then I put my king on f7. That's the plan. Let's do it. I think that line is fairly forced. I and mean, he could play maybe knight e4 right now if he doesn't want to take right away. Because if he plays knight e4, I probably will not take on e5 myself. Because his knight could jump in, but somehow I think he will take. If he plays knight e4, I'll just go king f7 anyways, I'm pretty sure. So, no harm, no foul. Yeah, I'm not sure how else I would have played that position if not for f6 here. So he does take, and I'll take with my pawn. Knight e4, king f7, he is threatening knight takes f6, kind of. There's always the question of this undefended knight. But um, I probably shouldn't tempt fate. Yeah, I'll just go here. It's useful. Plays a good centralizing move. Now, his rook doesn't have any infiltration points available on this file. So one idea I kind of like is to go rook g6 and then try to bring it to uh, g4 to attack this knight again. Just making sure I'm not missing any tactics or anything. Don't think I am. 
might be some weird stuff. Like, my bishop is on c6 is undefended. So I'm just, like, checking to make sure he can't go something wacky, like knight eg5 check, and when I take with a pawn, then go knight e5. Um, if rook g6 and that happens, knight eg5, I can play... I think I can just play rook takes g5. And it will be good. Still, though, I, I don't know how comfortable I feel with that position. So rook g6, knight eg5 check. Um, rook takes g5. Let's say uh, knight takes g5, f takes g5. Huh. H takes g5. And if I take, he might have rook e5 at the end. Slightly annoying. Could play rook g8 here. But somehow I want to keep my... Um, this rook available to come to the center if necessary. Yeah, that bishop being loose on c6 is annoying. But I don't want to move it because if I move it to like b7, he gets rook d7 in. I could play like king g6, but I like my king on f7. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay, I, I think I see something. So if I play rook g8 and he goes knight eg5, I can take with the pawn, because if he goes knight e5 check, my rook on h6 actually protects the, the bishop on c6. That is an interesting development. Okay, I think that's swinging me in favor of this move. I like this move. And my plan is to um, bring the rook into g4, basically. It's kind of weird. I'm, like, ignoring my um, queen side and center and attacking on the king side, but it looks pretty good, actually. He's playing very quickly. So if I bring my rook into g4 and he checks, do I care about that? Nah. Okay. Got to speed up a little bit. Can't let him have all the fun on the clock. So now I'm attacking his knight. Presumably he has to move it to, um, I don't know, d2. But probably he'll play this knight to d2 if he has a choice. Then one idea I have is to go like rook h to g6 and try to sack on h4. Um, it wouldn't be a sack if he couldn't take it because I would have made him. All right, so this looks really good for me. Um, thing is, if I play rook here, he can play f3, right? And I'm not doing too hot as far as my rook goes. So what do we think? Knight d6, maybe? Nah, knight d6 is too easy for him. Hmm... Oh, I just want to play some move here kind of fast just to see what he does. Okay, let's play a5. It's a useful move. Maybe he'll go a4. In an endgame, a5 is useful, so let's do it. I'm now really wondering if I can sack on h4. I'm really wondering about that. I'm hoping he plays f3 and just kind of, like, makes me move the rook back anyways. So I'm trying to provoke him into playing that. Now, then his g3 square would be weak. I think that plays to my advantage. I have a definite initiative here. He does play f3. Okay, so let's go all the way back. Unless take and then bishop d6 is any good. No, I don't have time to consider that. There's no need to go for something drastic here. So g3 is a clear target at this point. 
like now I can actually play this rook to g6 without fear of my rook that was on g4 getting trapped. So I like that. Yeah, and you know what? If this rook comes over to g1 to defend, knight e3 could be nasty for him. Attacking the rook, attacking c2. Looks like he's just barely having everything defended here. And I might also just like, after doubling the rooks and really focusing on g3, just play a timely knight e6. Try to get him to swap. Okay, I thought that move just lost a pawn for him, but maybe he's sacrificing it in the hopes of counterplay. I think I'll just play rook, um, rook h to g6 now. I think that looks good. Any reason not to? Don't think so. There's that knight g5 move again, but take knight e5 check. Let's say king, uh, I don't know, f8. That's got to be good for me. King e8 maybe? Uh, <clears throat> take if I take he takes I take on g3 does he have rook d7 oh no that shouldn't be a problem if I take I think he actually take with a pawn and then after um, knight takes g3 maybe e5 or something Yeah. Okay. I don't have time to think, so I'm gonna play this move. I, I just really can't spend more time on uh, this type of decision. I'm kind of doing this, recognizing I might not be playing the best move right now. But I wonder if knight g5, if I can just sack the exchange, like rook takes g5, pawn takes g5, rook takes g5. Because my pieces are so good. These bishops are monstrous. That's probably a pretty good line for me. And then g3 and f3 are hanging. You know, I might do that just so the initiative does not pass over to him as we're approaching some mutual time pressure. I mean, he's still got over half his time left, so he's fine. But I'm under five minutes. I think I will do that. It's a good strategy to try to seize back the initiative. I'm only going down one point of material, but um, it solves a lot of my problems. I get rid of his knight in the center. Okay, so again, he's letting me win the pawn if I want. Hmm. It's just a very provocative way of playing. Um, take, take, knight takes g3. What's the deal? e5 or something, or rook d7? I think I'm fine with either development, so let's just take... Let's do this. E4 is hanging, so even in the event of rook d7, I can just take e4, I think. Actually, if rook d7 now, I might play b5. That's what I'm thinking here. Plays e5 instead. Okay, so I can go knight f5. I can just drop the knight back. Um, other moves. Other moves that come to mind. F5? F5 is probably a good move. B5. Um, Knight F5. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Let's just do that. Let's pre-move this capture in case he wants to do it. If he takes on f6 first, I'll take on g1. So, that's the way I'm leaning. Okay. Hmm. b5. Or... Hmm. Yeah, he's playing aggressive, 
and he probably should, given the situation. Hmm. Gotta make a decision. Um, what to do here? Really feel my position's good. Okay, I'm gonna go here and get him to take on c7. And I was thinking bishop d8, but now I'm reconsidering. b5, you can take on a5. Let's do that though. And when he takes on a5, I'll take e5. If check on uh, c6, I have bishop d6, so at least that's possible. It's even material. His h-pawn might fall. My queen pawns, queen side pawns are weak. No doubt about that. I might be getting into some mating net territory against him, though. If I can take on h4, then there's some, you know, then my knight, bishop, and rook will all be participating. So this could get wild pretty soon. Stay tuned. Um, I'm just going to take... I don't see what else to do. And if rook c6, I'll play king d5. And play for the endgame win. He could go um, knight takes c5 Check. here. He does. Okay. Um, what do I do against that? Because king here, bishop takes e5 maybe? Weird. Weird stuff. Okay, let's do that. And give it a check. check. I feel like I'm nearly mating him with my current material situation. I can just run the e pawn too. No, don't do that. <laughs> Alright, let's go here first. So now king f4 is on the docket. I'd like to not have to force a draw. I'd like to avoid doing that if I could. Okay, let's go here. He didn't take on b5. I'm surprised. I thought he would. Oh, I can just go h4. Oh, I could have played h4 and set up a mating net with rook g3. Pfft, totally didn't realize that. Completely missed that idea. I was trying to get my king up to f4 to support rook g3. Okay, um, I had that for a couple moves then. Yeah, king f5 was... Well, maybe not king f5, but definitely rook g1. h4 Check. was just like winning on the spot, I think. Okay, I can still do it though. His bishop has a hard time getting in the game. Yeah, this, is, this has got to be pretty much winning for me. Wonder if he can take on f3 and then take on e5 and attempt to draw the game somehow. A4. Um okay, let's just take first before doing anything. And then this mitting net idea. Yep, he's gotta do that. Okay, king takes. Yeah, well, now I have the past e pawn. Okay, I'll just push. I'll just go stop Check. that pawn just in case. Yeah, this is over. Go win it. And he resigned. All right. Well, that got intense at the end. 
Let's have a look, analyze. Famous quote by Aronian. He says, when he wants to play for a win, he plays uh, the Berlin. And when he wants a draw, he plays the Marshall Gambit. <laughs> so, point being that the Berlin actually can reach like pretty rich positions. It just has a, a pretty boring reputation because if White wants to, he can steer the game into um, like drawish territory or just symmetrical territory. Like D3 is a move if White wants to avoid the Berlin endgame. That leads to pretty sterile positions sometimes. So, but this is the Berlin endgame proper. Knight f5, uh, he traded queens, and now we're in the endgame. So b6 is interesting. Bishop d7 is also played. Um, there's there's lots of moves. King e8. Bishop d7 and b6 are both um, much less main lines compared to like king e8 or knight e7. Knight e7 is another move. Or h6 is played a lot. Um, the Berlin's kind of a hard opening to study because it's just such a diverse endgame. And the exact move orders like don't matter all that much sometimes like the fact that black has like five different playable moves here should tell you that it's um not an opening you can study like concretely so b6 um b3 and then bishop d7 bishop b2 bishop e7 h3 yeah so if he had played g4 i was just gonna have to play knight h4 and then take bishop takes and maybe this is what he should do and now play like f3 or something and i think we have a pretty typical position for this line um h5 h3 and he tries to preserve the pawn majority on this side of the board um maybe that was like a more direct way to play it for him so h3 i went h5 he played knight e4 rook h6 knight g5 King e8, and then g3. Yeah, so the point I was trying to make about this g3 move is like, let's say he had played like, I don't know, rook, rook ad1 might actually be a pretty good move. Uh, let's say he plays rook fe1, and I go here, and then h4 is played to prop up the knight. I do have this knight takes h4 idea, undermining a key defender of g5. So knight takes h4, rook takes g5, good position. So I'm a pawn. Um, so g3, I think, was intended to prepare h4. So g3, c5, h4, bishop c6, rook fe1, and now f6. Yeah, um, I like this position that I got after f6. I wonder if he had a better option here. Let's turn on the engine. Haven't used the engine yet for this game. Interesting. Okay, so it thinks black is better. I wonder if it really dislikes h4. It does. So it approves of me playing bishop c6, okay. And then here, now it likes rook g6. Also interesting. But I did that. Why does it like rook g6 so much? I wonder if the point is that I'm threatening to play bishop takes f3 and then take on h4. I don't know, though. And maybe also it's just it fits in well if I ever play f6. Because as you saw in the game, I don't really want my rook on h6 forever. I'd rather move it at some point. So interesting option there. So f6, he took. Yeah, and it might be better for him to preserve the tension, according to the computer. Knight e4. And um, that does make sense because I probably won't relieve the tension myself on e5 because he can take with his knight and jumps into the center with tempo on my bishop. So that's a good point that the engine makes. Uh, take, take, knight e4, king f7. Yeah. Um, comparing the respective majorities, like neither of us have like super mobile pawn majorities right now, but um, his is probably less mobile than mine because his pawns protect his king. And in a position where there's lots of pieces on the board and you have a majority, if it's by your king... It's hard to activate that majority because by definition, you'll probably be weakening it. You know, you'll be advancing the pawn cover. So we're a long ways away from uh, the respected pawn majorities being relevant. And if we can't look to the pawns, we got to look to the pieces to determine who's better here. And I think it has to be black because my minor pieces are just great. I've got 
two bishops, especially the light square bishop, is awesome. Um, admittedly, he has a pretty solid game right now, but it just seems like I have easy ways to pressure him, especially that knight on e4. So he went here. I did play rook g4. Now in this position, okay, I see the computer likes this move, so let's calculate this. I didn't probably give this enough thought. Knight takes h4, but I'm not surprised that the computer likes it. Um, well, first thought, we'll look at g takes h4 in a second, but first thought is that if f3, I can actually just Check. play this move. I don't know if I saw that during the game. I don't think so. Because then after this, I can take on e4, in whichever way I want, rook or bishop. And I've just won two pawns in a massive position, just winning for black. Okay, so if knight takes h4, presumably he'd have to take. And I'm going to guess Check. take now. Um, let's say king g3, just to stay out of any unpleasant pins, like if the king were to go to g2. And... Yeah, I wonder if black just has really good play here, like f5 maybe, which defends my rook and also attacks his knight, um, or just rook check. g4 check, uh, and maybe then f5. Hard to say. Probably f5 right away. I think I'm going to get a lot of pieces joining the attack. Yeah, in fact, if he moves this, check mate. this is just mate on the spot. <laughs> so, wow, I'm getting a lot of... Excellent play if, with that, okay. Um, let's just see. So knight takes h4, if he takes, ah, okay, so not even take on h4 right away, just rook hg6, threatening this move. It's a quiet move. And if he goes here, the switchback, bishop d7. Aha, uh -huh. and the light square bishop decides the issue. Wow. So the threat is just like rook g2 or something. Yeah. That's amazing. And then knight g3, I can Check. take on g3, and he's going to get mated. Checkmate. Uh-huh. Well, knight takes h4 would have been a nice way to play it. That would have been consistent with my buildup and how I felt about the um, activity of my position overall. So I, I didn't quite know what to do, and I didn't want to spend a lot of time. But uh, yeah, if I had more time, I certainly would have calculated that move. I definitely would have calculated that. So, a5, he went here. I dropped this back. And then here, rook hg6. Okay, so this was an interesting moment. I'm going to turn the engine off for a moment. So, he played rook g1, which is really pretty passive. Um, if knight g5, I don't know the wisdom of this move, because I can probably take here and check. Then check. Um, let's say king e8. And then you can't take the bishop here because I just take back. So let's say he takes here. And I'm sure this position is pretty good for black still. But I wasn't quite sure. Like he might have knight, uh, rook e5 and try to double up his rooks and attack my miners. Um, so I was actually thinking about this exchange sacrifice idea. Like rook takes g5, pawn takes g5, rook takes g5. And I like the fact that this pawn is attacked and this pawn is also attacked twice. So I'm probably going to win another pawn which will bring about material equality, and my peace activity advantage should persist going further into the position. So having said that, let's see what the computer thinks. Um, first of all, about my principal line. Computer says this is roughly equal. Oh, it gives bishop e5. Yeah, I didn't see that move. <laughs> That's a cool move to defend g3, and if I take, then he takes Check. here and he's going to go out to the bishop. That's a total computer move. Very hard to spot. So it says I should just play the sober move. F takes g5. Knight e5 check. check. King f8. Um, knight takes check. g6. Rook takes g6. And if rook e5, knight g7. And black is doing very, very well. Okay, so the minor pieces are uh, the more valuable thing in this position. Not his rooks plus slight activity, temporary activity. Yeah, because this bishop's going to d6, and, you know, barring some some huge comeback by white. I, I guess I got to kind of worry about the g5 pawn, but barring some inaccurate play by me, I think it's very good for black. Okay. That was one line I was curious about. I probably would have played rook takes g5, though, in the game, because it just looked more practical in time pressure. So, rook g1, and here, interesting... Interesting that the computer thinks I should play b5. 
And after knight takes a5, only then take here. And then take here. You know, that knight was pesky on the c4 square. So I guess the point is, like, drive it far away. And maybe you can play bishop d6 in the future, is what I can do. So I think that is, like, really, really good. Um, I hadn't really thought about the b5 move yet. So I just took, and then took on g3. <laughs> Again, he has this bishop e5 resource if he wants. The pawn on e4 is hanging, so... I think most everything has to be good for black here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just missed some direct ways to just win. Uh, yeah, rook g4 looks <laughs> like a pretty strong argument, just going after that. And if he comes here, do I just play... Oh, just f5, and this pawn is falling. My bishop joins on h4. Yeah. And later on, it was just egregious that I missed h4. Pawn h4, that is. Okay, so... Knight f5 was not a good move here. Rook g4 would have just taken care of business. It got messy after this. I mean, I was for a second doubting whether I had any advantage. I think he played. He might have played a little bit fast. Like, yeah, here I was wondering about um, e takes f6 as an in-between move he could insert. And not just reactively move his knight. Um, yeah, I don't know. E takes f6 looks pretty good. And if I take here, he can give a check and actually go after that piece. Hmm. Well, I took, or he took on a5 and I took here. And now I'm back in the driver's seat. Possibly some inaccurate moves, check. but nothing seriously upsetting the check. balance of the game. Okay, so I can't play h4 here because he can go check and then trade the rooks. But, after I play this move in here, isn't h4 just winning on the spot? Yeah, well, Check. it would have forced him to do what he did in the game, which is go for this. And then he should definitely take on e5. Yeah, that's the thing. In the game, he took the h-pawn and let the e-pawn survive. But, um, yeah, he should take this way, and it's harder for me to utilize the h-pawn, because it's a rook-pawn and his king is right in front of it. Yeah. But I didn't put two and two together that I can create this mating net, h4 and rook g3, and my knight is helping to stop his king from escaping. Um, I kept looking at, like, king f4 and then rook g3, but the reason why I played rook g1 is I don't want him to play bishop Check. c1 in response when I bring my king to f4. So that's why I did that. But then I realized, oh no, I Check. actually could have played h4. Okay, this does look winning, though. Take, take. It sees a win with what? Rook check. check. And then rook h2. Check. And then just taking the pawn on c2. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty darn crushing as well. I could probably bring my king up to e3 next move. Like, in the event of this. Yeah, king e3 and more mating nets in store for him. Okay, so... Black is winning here. I do wonder, though, in this position, if he had taken on e5... Yeah, bishop takes e5. I was trying to calculate, like, what would happen, because check. check, and then here. Looks really dire for white. And without his pawns, he would just be losing. I could play king f2, and he'd be in Zugzwang. Um, he'd have to play king g4, king takes h4, and I can take his bishop. But um, with those pawns on board, he'll run the pawns, and then just try to sw uh, swipe my pawn on h4. So this might actually be a draw. I'm not going to extensively analyze that, but I think it is a draw. The computer seems to think so. But he took here, and then, yeah, e4. He, his, my uh, e-pawn will cost him his bishop, and his a, pawn, a and c-pawns are not nearly Check. advanced or connected enough to do any damage, so. Wow, very interesting game. Some missed opportunities um, for me to maybe wrap that one up a little bit earlier, but... Well, I'm happy with the middle game and the opening. Check. This is a fun line, so I'll try to play it again. Yeah, I like my position a lot right around here and after the subsequent f6 move. So, rook g6 would have been interesting too. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that standard game, and I will be back tomorrow with another one. Please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.